Home on the Hill, Republican Representative Steve Scalise of Louisiana is on the brink of becoming the next House Speaker. But he's not there just yet. Republican strategist Mark Williams joins us to walk us through the party changes. It's good to see you this morning. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, well, let's uh, first talk about the fact that Scalise got the nomination over Jordan. I mean, it was relatively close, right? So what does that say overall about where the party stands? I mean, it says that there's still divisions and, and factions within the House Republican co Conference. And, you know, I would have thought that they would have come out of, you know, that behind the behind the doors election uh, with a, a sign of unanimity. But unfortunately, that's just not the case. It's, it's almost like Groundhog Day again with with House Republicans. And so you've got Steve Scalise, who needs to get to 217 votes. And I think he's still, you know, probably around 20 votes short if it were to, to come to the floor today. It is like Groundhog Day with, you uh, you know, McCarthy back in January, and yet it's not because, let's let's be honest, the background is very different now. We've got the war in, Rizu, uh, in Israel going on. We've got the looming uh, November uh, government shutdown possibility. So um, there's a different narrative here, and maybe perhaps uh, it's a little more pressing for them to come to some kind of unanimity, like you said. You, you would think that that would that would push them to you know really unite behind one one speaker, but again, I think there's still some raw emotion um, on some factions of the uh, of the con conference with how things went down with uh, Kevin McCarthy. And so again, I think it, emotions are are really really well, and it's going to take them a little bit of time to to work through that. But I agree. At the end of the day, there's a there's a huge power vacuum given the you know geopolitical events that are that are occurring and you know like you alluded to the uh, the government funding backstop at the at the end of November and so you know they, they've got to get this got this figured out or else Congress is is just going to co continue to to grind to a halt well in your personal opinion what's it going to take um, for for some of these uh, politicians to get past their emotions I mean Jim Jordan himself said okay I'm out I'm backing Scalise this is what we need to do and yet you still have some Republicans that are like well you know what I'm voting for Jim Jordan anyway I think it's going to be time and pressure to, to to be completely frank. Like once they really understand kind of the 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 lack of time that they have to deal with the difficult problems at at hand, then I think you'll see more of them coalesce behind one speaker. Look at the end of the day, they get, um, they, they have a speaker pro tem right now in Patrick McHenry that can't do a a whole lot, and so right. I can envision a I can envision you know a scenario where. He is gets that speaker pro tem you know, title taken away, and at least so that they can start legislating in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, business needs to get done. So they didn't have a vote yesterday uh, because it was obvious that they weren't going to be able to, you know, get someone elected. Uh, the House reconvenes at noon today. What are the chances of a vote happening today? You think? Probably slim to none. I mean, I think this thing potentially goes into into the weekend. Mm. I, I'm hopeful that by the beginning of next week they have this put to bed and they can start, you know, really getting down to the to the business at hand. Mark Williams, Republican strategist, sure uh, appreciate you this morning and your insight as well. Thank you. All right, Homa.